Steroids. Oh. I'm gonna go, all right. You want I'm, me to answer first? Yeah. They're way overrated. Oh. Nobody likes talking more than Greg Doucette. Sardine, in a sardine. So I'm gonna go track him down and we're gonna do an underrated, overrated video about training, nutrition, supplements, and controversial fitness topics. And maybe we'll get him to talk harder and longer than last time. Lifting heavy. Lifting heavy, absolutely overrated. <sighs> overrated. All right, I'm going underrated, in my opinion. Way overrated. <laughs> if you want to get strong, I feel like you have to add weight to the bar. The only way you're going to prove to get strong is just incorporate progressive overload and you know add weight to the bar gradually over time. Why is it why is it overrated? Well, I'm saying it's overrated because you don't need to lift heavy to get a good physique. You can absolutely lift lighter weights. You can go for higher reps. Lifting heavy, you're going to have a greater chance of injury. And people who are training heavy are more likely to get injured. They're ego lifting in the gym. And so if you're out there, don't have to train heavy to look amazing. Well said. Training to failure. I would say that it's even. Is there a neutral? Is it's exactly where it should be. It's not overrated and it's not underrated. Training to failure is important if you're an advanced lifter, but if you're a beginner, you don't need to do it at all. And so, depending on where you're at in your training, you either need to do it or you don't need to do it. Spoken like a true diplomat. I'm going to say training to failure again, underrated, just because I feel like most people don't train hard enough. And at least if you know if you're training, to failure, you're probably gonna be giving your body some kind of stimulus to adapt and improve. So my opinion, training to failure, underrated. And I would say, just to add to that, you're right. Most people don't train hard enough, but most people don't even train close to failure. They're mostly training five reps shy of failure. So if those guys trained a little bit harder and didn't approach failure, they'd still be doing a lot better than they're doing right now. Range of motion. I would say that it's somewhere in the middle. Range of motion in my mind was, we all had to have full range of motion all the time, but new research, especially now where long length partials has been shown that it potentially has even more muscle than doing the full range. And so I don't know where it is right now. Every year it seems like something else is different. So I just I, say train hard, full range, partial range, at least train. Absolutely. Again, I'm gonna take a hard stance. I feel like full range of motion is underrated again. I come from like kind of an old school of thought. Strength is only gained in the range that it's trained. So I feel like if you're just doing partial reps, you probably could be getting more benefit if you're taking your muscles through a full range of motion. So I think range of motion, again, underrated. So I'd add to that, go with what he's saying, full range of motion for the full set, and then if you can't get any more reps at the end, you wanna to go to failure, then maybe do partials at the end. So incorporate both. Partial, it's like training the true failure is what Greg's saying. Isolation exercises. I would say that's overrated. I don't think you need to do isolation exercises whatsoever. Plus, if you're really focusing on major movements, compound movements, you're gonna build more than one muscle at the same time and you have less time in the gym. And so if you don't wanna do isolation, don't do them. I love that answer. That's coming from an IFBB pro bodybuilder saying isolation exercises are overrated. I think isolation exercises are overrated as well. I personally rarely do them. I've built my physique mainly just on compound lifts. Squats, deadlifts, presses, rows, dips, pull-ups. Basically six exercises, some single leg exercises, and that's how I've trained the majority of my training career. So isolation exercises, overrated. Rest days. Oh, I think neutral. I think that some people need a rest day, some people don't. I rarely take a day off. I've gone, for example, I've done an entire contest prep where I've never taken a day off and it was fine. I mean, if you need a day off, take it. If you don't, don't take it. I think rest day is overrated. All right, simply because, as I said before, I think most people need to worry about, they don't need to worry about overtraining, they need to worry about undertraining. So rest days, yes, if you're truly training hard and pushing yourself to the max, like day in and day out at the gym, you're gonna need some like rest, because like, that's when your body grows. But in general, I think most people, they should train harder because most people, they just don't train hard enough. So yeah, I'm most say, people oh, don't right. train harder to need a day off. Like 95% of people don't need to take a day off. So for me, maybe, for you, maybe, yeah. but for most people, just keep going, right. train harder. Train harder. Than last time. Veganism. Veganism, way overrated, all right? Personally, I don't understand why people intentionally feed themselves lower quality foods, thinking they're saving the planet. And again, no one's been vegan their entire life and no one stays vegan. And Anytime you exclude entire food groups out of your diet, I don't think that's a good thing. I agree. I don't think being a vegan is anything beneficial for the body. I don't think you need to do it. If you want to do it for religious reasons, that's on you. But if you think that you should be vegan because it's somehow healthier than last time, it is not. Eddie Abu's diet advice. <laughs> I'm going to say underrated. I know Greg probably disagree with me on this one, but I'm going to say underrated simply because whether you like Eddie Abu or not, 
he has made people realize they need to eat more real whole foods and probably cut out most processed packaged foods. So I think his net impact overall has been positive. Again, I don't agree with everything he says, but if I have to choose one stance, I'm gonna say underrated. I'm gonna say by far 100% overrated, more overrated than last time, and here's why. 50% of what he says is maybe believable or true, but the other 50% is absolute horseshit nonsense. And so when you're listening to a guy who says half it right and half of it's wrong, you don't know what is right and what is wrong. So you're being led, you're being tricked, and you don't know what to think. Is the, is the theory that you shouldn't eat a bunch of shit, diet, junk, crap good? Yes, of course it is. But everything else he says is complete nonsense. When he says don't have fruit because there's sugar in it. Well, you're teaching what parents that, oh, I'm not gonna give my kid an apple anymore. And so everyone, everything Eddie says, everyone already knows. Name one, raise your hand out there if you don't know that eating chips is bad for you. You already know that. So is he being glorified for saying what we already know? He teaches us absolutely nothing. Not one thing has any of us learned. He just says, this is shit, wake the cookbook up. He's not doing anything good for anyone. He's only making us stupider than last time. I can't wait to make that piece of content right there. Dairy. Dairy. I think dairy is underrated. I personally consume a ton of dairy. I know it doesn't agree with everyone. People may have lactose intolerances, but if you look at dairy, it is a very high quality nutrient dense food. So if you tolerate dairy, I say eat it. And so I think dairy is great, but Eddie Abu, as we just discussed, he's saying you can't have milk, it's shit. Like, so by definition, you're just agreeing with me about Eddie Abu. Milk, yeah, dairy is awesome. If you want to drink your high protein milk, it's great. They don't take out, they don't take, they put some chemicals in it and take out all the good stuff. They don't. Eddie yeah. does have no clue about anything. Vegetables. Oh, I think vegetables personally are overrated. I consume very few vegetables and I feel the exact same whether I eat vegetables or not. I personally think vegetables are filler food, so I think they're overrated. And I'm gonna say absolutely unequivocally underrated. And the reason is because if you go from eating junk food in your diet to having like vegetables, you're gonna automatically be eating fewer calories to help you stick to your diet. So the difference is you're extremely healthy, you have great genetics, you have great worth ethic, and you put everything into the gym. You're, so for you, you don't need it. But for somebody else who's maybe 50 pounds overweight, if they switch their diet from what they're doing right now, and all they do is eat vegetables and change nothing about their cardio, automatically gonna be losing weight. And so to them, it's underrated. For you, I can see why it's overrated. So what you're saying makes sense for you, yeah, but yeah, for yeah. the general person, underrated. No, and I wish I could go back. It's like a hard stance, underrated you can or go overrated. Back. All right, I'm going back. What Greg's saying is absolutely true because I would much rather a person eat vegetables, real whole foods, rather than some kind of low quality shit food. So it all depends on the context. Do they really offer you that much benefit? In my opinion, I personally don't think so. However, if you're coming from you know, someone that it lives on processed packaged foods, if you stop eating those and include more vegetables in your diet, that's absolutely a good thing and extremely underrated. Now think of this, Eddie says, let's have all like basically meat, basically carnivore. He has a little bit of vegetables, a little bit. Would you not think that Eddie's message would be better if he said, you should eat more vegetables, you should eat more fruit, cut out the junk, do that. That would be a great message. I, yes, I do think that would be a much better message for sure. Way better. It's, it's definitely less polarizing, less controversial. Yeah, and the reason he's true. popular is because he says so... things that are so controversial. The algorithm pushes nonsense. So if you speak out of absolute stupidity, the, the views are going are gonna to just keep going up. Absolutely. Way underrated. Creatine monohydrate, in my opinion, probably the greatest, most proven, most effective supplement ever. You're probably, you're going to see maybe some noticeable benefits and your strength, your muscle mass. It's obviously good for your cognitive function too. I think everyone regardless of your age and ability level, can benefit from supplementing with creatine monohydrate. So creatine, way underrated. And 100% overrated, the exact opposite stance. Wow. And so here's why. Everyone knows that creatine works. There's thousands of studies supporting this. Everyone knows it works, but they think it works better than it actually does. I surveyed 121,000 people and 50% who took it couldn't notice that they, that they were even taking it. I said, do you notice it that you took creatine? Did you see any benefits? They never noticed it. And so people have this thought, if I take creatine, I'm going to build so much muscle. It's the best supplement in the world. It is absolutely not the best supplement. It's the most studied supplement. I sell supplements that are far more beneficial than creatine. For example, Turk Builder, Acti Builder, Geo2 Max, way more beneficial. If you tried it, I should give you some. I'll you will it. be like, I can't believe how much this works. All right. The people in the back. Yeah, they're laughing. Yeah, I've always. Marie, thought, I've always. Thought. What do you think about Turk Builder compared to creatine? Way better. It's Way better. 
And this is an eye surgeon. This is yeah. not like, this is, it's way better. So I would say like Turk Builder and stuff, so underrated Ecti Stairs. People have no clue how good it actually is. And if you compare like, because I sold and did the same service to people, more people said that Turk Builder, Ecti Builder had more benefit than creatine. So creatine is seen as the golden standard, the best supplement out there. But there's so many other supplements out there that are far better. And so creatine way overrated, not that it doesn't work. And I would recommend everyone take it. But it's so un, it's it's just so overrated compared to what other supplements are out there. That's a good topic. That's caffeine a is better. If I had to pick between caffeine and creatine, Claudine, <laughs> I gotta play that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, what is that, Drake? <laughs> Claudine in the sardine. I wish I could sing. I, I have no yeah, memory. That's but right. caffeine is that's right. so much better. Like if you had to like, like I'm gonna cut out caffeine from my life or creatine. There's no way I'm taking creatine. I if can't you, even if, tell if, when if I you take put creatine. It that way. I personally, I can't really tell either, but I've been taking it for so long. However, because I've optimized everything, I'm doing everything right, I do feel stronger when I'm taking creatine versus when I'm not. However, yeah. that could just be in my head. That could be a placebo effect. I think you can notice it. But and if you had to cut out one from your diet, like get rid of caffeine pre-workout or creatine, which one do you think would affect your workout more? Dude, that's a really, if, oh, if I cut one. If I had to cut out one of my life altogether, yeah. I would cut out probably creatine because I love creatine. Yeah, I, I so would cut much. out creatine too. So but that's if, why if, if I'm it so was for a workout, if it was for workout purposes only, I'd probably choose creatine over caffeine. Really, man. But I that's would have a better like 200 milligrams of caffeine yeah. over creatine to go to the gym. Man, I just can push harder. I like the workout. I get that the dopamine fix. Mm. I leverage caffeine to to training in the gym. No one's ever framed it that way. That's really that's a really difficult one. I just made a piece of content two days ago talking about my top three, and it was creatine, protein, caffeine. Testosterone boosters. Oh, I'm thinking these way overrated. Testosterone boosters. Like, take, take all the testosterone boosters you want. A way better testosterone booster. Get additional hour of sleep, all right? I wouldn't, I personally would not spend money on testosterone boosters. I would just try to get more sleep, eat more high quality food, and train harder. And, that, and, you'll, and you'll optimize your testosterone probably the best that way. And so everything you're saying is 100% true. However, test boosters today are underrated. They were overrated in the past because they didn't work at all. There was no real difference. Like a boost of 10 nanograms per deciliter not going to make a difference. But now with, for example, uh, let's see, ashwagandha, uh, tribulus. Tom Cattley. No, not tribulus. Tom Cattley yeah. and Fidoji Agressus. They were incre increasing testosterone levels by like two to 400 nanograms per deciliter. So it could be substantial. This was Andrew Huberman who discussed this I on the podcast. I that. So it's been shown to help quite a bit. But like you're saying, sleep is better. So sleep is more under... Or, Sleep is more underrated than, yeah, than test boosters. But most people say that test boosters don't work, but they do. But people would be even better off by sleeping more than taking these test boosters. So in other words, if you're taking test boosters, but you're only getting four hours of sleep a night, then you're probably, an idiot. You're an idiot. Absolutely, you get your sleep first. Sumo deadlifts. I'm gonna go first, you go first. Sumo deadlifts are underrated <laughs> because people think that you're only gonna get strong from doing conventional deadlifts. They've, everyone makes fun of sumo deadlifters. Listen, whatever deadlift you want, if it's sumo, conventional, uh, the, the, what's the other bar called? The trap bar, trap bar. The trap bar, bar. Pick the one that you like. And so sumo, definitely underrated. I think sumo deadlifts are way <laughs> overrated. I personally only feel like girls spread their legs, but I'm not a power lifter. I haven't set world records like Greg has, but I have done a triple body weight, conventional deadlift, and I personally just feel like sumo deadlifts are way easier because you have to pull the bar so much less of a distance so of course they're going to be easier and if sumo deadlifts were so great why don't they allow them in strongman competitions that's my opinion i think sumo deadlifts are overrated i think conventional deadlifts look way cooler and that's why they allow it and that's why they encourage it in strongman competitions but if you look at the best lifters in the world conventionals lift more than sumo so if by definition it was easier why aren't all the best deadlifts sumo that that would be my argument there steroids steroids Oh, I'm gonna go, all right. You want I'm, me to answer first? Yeah. They're way overrated, oh. are you kidding me? People think that, okay, so this guy is 100% natural, look at his physique. There, people think that if you look like this and you're natural and he takes steroids, he's in the Mr. Olympia. It doesn't work the same for everyone. There are guys out there that could take every steroid in the world, remember I've done them for 10 years, never look as good as this, never. Everything, 
including the kitchen sink. Never to get to this side, it's genetics. And so steroids, of course they work, but people think they work better than they actually do. There's a small percentage of people, the outliers, like 1% out there that are hyper responders. And so they take these steroids, they put on 50 pounds of muscle, they show their before and after transformations and everyone sees that and they're thinking, well, if I took steroids, that would happen to me. Trust me, I've coached guys, they've taken steroids under my guidance, they've taken it for years and put on 15 pounds of muscle. They're like, why don't I look like you yet? I'm like, you don't have the genetics. They're training hard, they're eating perfectly. It just doesn't work as good as people think they do. And so that's why I think they're overrated. That's, that, that's a very powerful statement, especially coming from someone of Greg's caliber, pro bodybuilder, world-class power lifter, and one of the biggest fitness influencers in the world. And he's done steroids, so he can speak both from a natural perspective and an enhanced perspective. I'll give my stance. I personally think steroids are overrated. Again, I can only speak from one perspective. I am lifetime natural and I've been able to achieve most of the goals that I've set out for myself naturally. And I personally just think more people should stay natural and before they ever consider taking steroids, max out your natural genetic potential first. And it's a personal choice, but I just feel like because steroids can have detrimental effects to your health, I'm gonna say overall, overrated. Do you feel like they're they're almost overly encouraged now too? Like I've seen I've, a shift where I it's feel almost like, cool now. I feel to do like it. steroid use now is almost ubiquitous in the fitness industry. It's everywhere. I personally think, and this is a question I was gonna ask you later, but I personally think it's more acceptable and more common and almost expected to take steroids now in the fitness industry than it, it's more popular than it ever has been. I think social media only exacerbates that. But I'm again I'm I'm proud to be natural and I just I care about health I think that's a message that more people need to understand yeah I think it's really sad that more people think that you should or you know if you do steroids you're gonna get more followers that it's cool people hype it up and we got names like trend twins I'm trying to yeah. pick on them but yeah. like when you have that name that's... and you're cool and have a lot of followers it's like other kids are copying them there was a 14 year old I did a video on and he called yeah. himself trend something and he was pretending to take trend he was on test boosters like, pretending to take trend in his videos 14 year old and well actually it was 17 pretending to be 14 I was like what is going on? So people are doing this, copying these things, pushing supplements, pushing peptides, gray yeah. area supplements. It's sad. It's not, it's, it's not a good place to be. And actually, sorry, Greg, I'm gonna ask you to elaborate one more time. Can you make that analogy you made when you said, when you compared someone with steroids versus someone who's obese? Oh, sorry. being on steroids and being obese, to me, they're the same things in terms of your health. If you're abusing steroids, it's no different than if you're abusing eating food, overeating. The health ramifications are bad. You're taking years off your life. And so when I look at somebody who's a Mr. Olympia bodybuilder, like the epitome of health, we think, if you look at their blood work, it's not good. Same as you look at somebody who's 400 pounds, it's not good. That's why bodybuilders are dying young. That's why people are obese are dying young. And so just because you're on steroids and look healthy doesn't mean that you actually are. Very well if said. If they were that healthy, I'd be on them now. Dude, Don't you sure. think yeah. I'd want to be jacked? I would dude, love well, to. You, you still are jacked. I still have a decent, oh, yeah, well, dude, I mean, jacked, it's great, yeah, but. but I would love to have 10 pounds, pounds more muscle and look like all these guys at the finest just, gym here. Yeah, it's just not worth, nuts. It's not, it's not worth the health consequences. Science-based training. Science-based training. Oh, I'll go. It's yeah. way overrated, way overrated. All you need to go into the gym is train harder than freaking last time. How hard? Harder than you did the last time. Is it that complicated? Whatever you did last time, do a little bit more. You did 30 minutes of cardio, do 31. You did 30 minutes at level three, do 3.1. A little bit harder, science this, science that. You're gonna get overloaded with information. You're not gonna remember anything. Way overrated. I despise evidence-based training, science-based training. I think it just, people use it so they can claim that like they sound smart. Dude, training and nutrition is so simple. Training is easy. Just like what Greg said, go into the gym and do something harder than last time. Incorporate progressive overload, whether that's just gradually increasing the weight you use or gradually increasing the reps you use with the same weight. Find some way to use progressive overload, science-based training. I think it's a gimmick. People know, they've, been, they've known how to train for 100 years, all right, 50 years. Stick to the basics and train hard. Way overrated. Yeah, there's nothing inherently wrong with learning and, and trying to and, and get more information. But when you go into the gym and all you're thinking is science this, I need to do exactly this many reps for this much effort, you can't even track that. Dude, if you do 10 yeah. reps of bicep curls, you can swing 1% more and make it so much easier. You can't actually track everything that you're doing. So no. you just need to go in and train hard. That's that's, that's all you need to do. I personally think it leads, it's detrimental. It makes people, way more people overthink than just go into the gym, train hard, stick to, stick to the basics. I hate science-based training. Where do you see Greg Doucette in the next five years? 
I would be exactly where I am right now. Loving life, making content. I don't see me changing. I love what I'm doing. If See, this is when, you know you love your life when you wouldn't change it without the money. Like I was doing the YouTube videos when I wasn't being paid, now I'm being paid and I'm still doing the videos. So it wouldn't change. I'd be doing the same thing. Dude, well said, man. That's like something you should aspire for. Doing what you love, all right? You heard it here, all right? This guy, however you feel about Greg Doucette, love him or hate him, he's undeniably been extremely successful and has left you know, an indelible mark on the fitness industry. So Greg, thank you so much for being on my channel. Thanks for, yeah, Ma- thanks make for sure you me. check him out. Greg Doucette on YouTube, Greg Doucette on Instagram. You guys you can't miss him, all right? Make sure you check out his cookbook. He puts out all kinds of content all the time. He sells supplements in his cookbook. And if you wanna learn about fitness or what's going on in the fitness industry currently, make sure you check out his channel. He'll, he'll keep you updated. Thanks again for having me. Perfect, thank you. Thank you.